Hi, you guys. I'm so excited to be here on the Craving Consciousness podcast. I'm putting this up on my YouTube channel, Brandeline Johnson. We are talking about how Facebook completely deactivated my account, what happened with it, the story behind it, a little bit of like spirit lesson coming through. So sharing a little spirit lesson, um, a car, you know, karmic behavior, and then a couple business tips for those of you that are business owners on what to do when something like this happens, right? Um, so the story goes is I, um, Saturday morning, I think it was October 1st, 2022, I was hacked, which we've all been hacked before. And you start getting messages and you know, your friend is getting hacked, but I don't know what these hackers did, but apparently it was not a good situation. So by like nine 30 in the morning, I found out that my Facebook was completely deactivated, not put in jail, just completely disappeared. You can't even search for my name on Facebook anymore. It's just gone. Um, and like groups that I was the only administrator for, those are gone. Like everything's just, it's gone. So um, sadly, I'm not able to access anything. I'm not able to access my pictures, my memories. They did give me a download, but that just sent me like my profile pictures, which I could really care less about those ones. Um, I have over 8,000 followers in our group and, and um, connected to my personal and business profile, maybe even 10,000 if we're talking about my business profile which my business profile is still up, but because I can't log in, I can't access my business profile either. Um, interestingly enough, though, since I have my Instagram linked, I think those are flying over there, but there's no way I could respond to anybody. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> point being about the podcast, it's not just to let you guys know, hey, I'm not on Facebook anymore. So come and find me on Instagram. I'm still there. And my handle there is I am Brandoline. So come find me on Instagram. I'm on my stories every day. Um, you know, I share things about my business and my personal life in the feed. Uh, definitely want to stay connected. Um, but yeah, so I'm not there anymore. But I want to do the podcast, not only to let you know where to find me, Brandoline Johnson on YouTube, the Craving Consciousness podcast on any of your podcast platforms. That's where we're at. And then of course on Instagram, I am Brandoline, but I also wanted to record this to kind of share my feelings and like being a spiritual woman on my reaction and response to this quote unquote happening, right? A lot of times we think, oh my God, look what is happening to me. And of course that was my initial reaction. Like, how could they do this to me? <laughs> but you know, take a couple steps back, get your, you know, you know, your OM on, take a couple of meditation sessions and then come back to this present moment and really finding the lesson that's there because we need to realize that nothing is happening to us, right? It's usually happening for us. So as catastrophic as it may seem, like you guys know, my husband died a year ago, catastrophe. I was like, can you guys just leave me alone for a while? The spirit be messing with you. You know what I mean? So they're like, yeah, sure. We'll wait for a year and then we'll, we'll take your Facebook too. <laughs> so now you like have nothing, um, which is interestingly enough. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys too, is it's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned over the last year is where is my time going? Where's my attention going? And where, where am I treating myself at? Where am I meeting myself at in my daily routine? Am I putting myself last? Because I'll tell you what, I sure damn was. And I didn't realize it until after my husband was gone and I was sitting there going, and I took time off from my job, sitting there going, where was I spending all this time? It was constantly focused on external, you know, make, creating content, helping clients from the moment I woke up in the, in the morning, not walking, not working out, not taking care of myself at all, taking care of every single other person. And so I want you guys to ask yourself today while I'm recording this podcast, like, where are you letting yourself get distracted, right? Let's use that word because if we're here in the present moment, that is where all life exists right here, right? This very second right here, hold my fingers. Um, and if you're getting distracted, then you're not in the present moment. And therefore what happens is you're not in alignment with your path. You lose track of your 
soul's path of your conscious, what it is that you're supposed to be being, not necessarily doing who you're supposed to be being. And then let's think about energy because you guys know I'm a big energy nerd is with these distractions, there's like little cords of your energy going to these different places. So if we think about Facebook, for example, um, all the different people that you see on your feed every day, which of course I'm going to miss because I actually care for a lot of these people, you know, seeing their kids pictures, getting involved in their lives. That's all great and all, but how much time, how much of your energy is being spent on those types of things? Um, and then even seeing like the Facebook ads coming through and then starting to think, well, maybe I need those cute pair, pair of booty shorts when I'm working out. Um, you know, uh, maybe I should go on that vacation. And so you're constantly like going all over the place and probably spending a huge amount of time doing it. So um, another thing I want to talk about is our body. And I've been talking about this a lot, especially at our spiritual retreat that I hosted about how our body is actually running the show a lot of times. So like I could see my phone over there, my hand like wants to grab it. It wants to scroll. It knows the password. It knows where the Facebook app is or the, or, um, you know, Facebook messenger and you're constantly just touching it. And then you're asking yourself, what, why the hell am I looking at this? It's because your physical body is so used to doing these things. Your brain isn't thinking to itself. Well, I consciously want to know what's going on on Facebook. No, it's just your, it's a habit. And it's a bad habit that we get into after it kicked me off. I want to say I tried to open Facebook like 30 times on Saturday. And I'm like, I'm not even, I, it's not even there. My Facebook's gone. So why am I opening this app? Right? So our energy gets corded to all these different things. And then we wonder why we're feeling anxious or we have insomnia at night when we're waking up or we can't go to sleep very well. It's because you are literally energetically connected to all of these ideas, to all of these places, things, distractions. Therefore, it's almost like um, you're not whole, right? You're not operating as a whole being because you're spit all over the place. This is why it's so important to like really cut cords every day, like spending that moment, spending that meditation time and getting all your energy back and coming back to this moment where you're like, I am all solid. I'm all here right now. And the thoughts are going to go away. All of these things. Right. Um, another thing I want to talk to you guys about is external circumstances, right? This was an external circumstance. I talked about in the beginning about things quote unquote happening to you or happening for you. We get triggered so many times, right? I was talking to one of my neighbors today about, oh my gosh, I'm really kicked off Facebook. Um, and then she's like, oh my gosh, I'm really pissed off because something went wrong with um, my car getting painted. And I'm just curious. And how could this guy do this and this? And this kind of went down a little tunnel. Whereas I'm like, well, for me, it's like, it is what it is with Facebook. You know, sure, I had five minutes of a freak out attack. But when you're coming back to this centered space, it, it, it is what it is. Having an emotion about it isn't going to change that external circumstance, right? Being upset, me being upset about it is not going to change the fact. Me being totally like, it is what it is. This is where we're talking about a spirit-led life. It is what it is. Do I want to create an emotion within my body that's going to go out to the universe to manifest more of whatever creates that emotion, right? Or do I want to be in the centered place where I could just start navigating my life again? It is what it is. Therefore, what is our next step? No emotion. And when it comes to having emotion against other people, right? Like for example, the lady that's upset that the person that didn't paint her car, right? Um, we're almost asking for karma because we're pointing outside of ourselves that that's where the blame needs to go. I'm upset and it's this object or this thing or this person's fault. When we do that, 
we're literally creating karma and you're just, you're the one that's upset, right? At this external circumstance. So you're the only one that's not at peace, right? But when you, when you keep pointing it at this other person, then you're just asking for more circumstances to happen because you're not accepting the fact that things just are the way they are. Now, if you come at it with more peace, you might meet that person or, or circumstance with peace and grow from that. And then you won't experience this tur- turbulence again. And, and, and I do mean turbulence because it is turbulence. When I'm talking about the spirit led life, you guys know, I'm always saying it's like being in a hovercraft and the shit shows down here. And while you might be flying over it and you might be seeing the circumstances underneath you, if you're not responding and reacting to them, you're still going nice and smooth in your hovercraft and you're not getting down on the shit. But when you're emotionally responding, then you're falling off your hovercraft or falling off your unicorn, like I like to say. And then you get down in the muck and all of a sudden you're back into a different dimension and you're going to start experiencing what comes with that karma, response, reaction, another experience with... um another experience will happen to give you an opportunity to grow, to give you that opportunity to be at peace the next time or to be pissed off and then just keep going through the vicious cycle, folks, right? So important for us to see these external circumstances, recognize when we're getting triggered because we're going to get triggered, right? Because we're human. We're not, I mean, you do get triggered on your hovercraft, but it's important to be conscious and go, oh shit, almost went down the shit show. We got to stay up here. And the triggers will start running with your thoughts, right? We have 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. These different triggers, it could be a color. It could be a sound. It could be a smell. It could be a feeling in your body. And all of a sudden in your mind, it's unconscious, right? It's just running with this crazy story that goes along with that trigger. So, so important to keep our thoughts in control. If you, if you can even do that, which you can't but at least being conscious of your thoughts so that you can make a conscious decision and go, you know what, these thoughts, these thoughts are not serving me. I'm probably going to create more angst in my life. Um, I'm not going anywhere with these thoughts. I'm just trying to control what's my ego. So slowing down those thoughts and coming back to everything is always going to be all right. Everything is always going to be all right. That's something I always tell myself and everything has always been all right. Yes. You get triggered. Yes, you're a freaking human. Yes, you're going to have external circumstances, but you get to make a decision on how to react or respond. And when you do that consciously, your future experiences are going to be so much nicer and so much more lovely. Um, It's never about what happened. It's about what you think about what happened, right? And your thoughts are always going to project into your future. So you need to ask yourself, what do you believe to be true? Or what do you want to believe to be true? What belief will serve you best? And then can you change your story and your mind and allow that, right? So for example, what do I believe to be true about me getting kicked off of Facebook? I believe to be true that it was an important lesson for me to once again, seeing how many distractions, once again, seeing how much I put other things before me, before my peace, before my healing journey for, before taking care of myself. Right. Um, the distractions that I was talking about, um, what do I believe to be true? I believe that at least at this current moment, I believe that I'm going to pivot. Obviously I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm not going to be using the Facebook platform. So I believe that there's something else exciting coming. Who knows? You never know. All of a sudden I I was joking around the other day. You never know. I might become a famous singer Um, or, or those types of things. I'm always a spiritual coach. I'm always teaching you guys intuition and mediumship development. I absolutely love what I do. I'm not going to stop, but pivoting. And if something doesn't hurt, you're not going to pay attention, right? We talk about that with like the pandemic and stuff. I always said, the universe is going to shake you to wake you. Look how many people left their careers 
during that time. Look how many people made major life decisions during that time. And they wouldn't have if everything just was hunky dory and kept going the same. Same with me and my lifestyle with my husband. If he hadn't passed away, we would have kept having the same lifestyle, same beliefs, doing the same thing. And I would be a different person than I am today. Do I wish my husband was still alive? The fuck yeah, I do. But I see over the year of everything that's changed. And it, I don't want to say it forced me, but it forced me to take a good look at what my life was like. This is the lesson here with the whole Facebook thing, because it was, it's a huge part of my business. I, I get a lot of people from YouTube, so I'm glad I'm still on there. But a huge part of my business was on the Facebook platform over, like I said, eight to 10,000 people in our group and our community. I had a community. So remember, it's never about what happened. It's about what you think about it. So it's okay for you to, you know, freak out for a second, but come back to this present moment and then make a decision that's going to serve you. Like make, make it be, make it blah, blah, blah. <laughs> If you could think about it in a positive way, and you can change your mind to be like, this is a growth opportunity. This is an opportunity. It all is an opportunity. And then for you to go, all right, all right, I'm cool now. All right. So now we can start taking steps forward consciously with intention and without being a crazy crybaby that's falling off her unicorn or her uh, hovercraft, right? Um, and then lastly, but I would also love for you guys to leave a comment on here. How do you feel about this? Hopefully this is helping you with your external circumstances with the way you respond, with the way you uh, let your thoughts get triggered. But I did want to add too about any of y'all that are business and entrepreneurs, because I do have a big following of, of you guys. Um, it's, it's so important to know. Like we, you know, I could have got mad at, at Facebook. What am I going to do? It doesn't belong to me. That platform does not belong to me. None of these platforms belong to you. Instagram, you could be taken down at any minute, right? Even the whole internet could be taken down. So what do we do about that? It's so important to have your connection with people and to be able to bring them into your space, right? So having a nice platform, maybe on your website, but definitely the huge point here is having an email list, right? Where you can keep in, in touch with these people. We have a few thousand people on my email list. Thank goodness, right? Um, but how do you get an email list? So important to um, just get, get people off these platforms and onto yours, onto something that you sort of own, right? Your email list, where it's like this personal connection, especially like social media, you could scroll, scroll, scroll half the time. You don't see what an entrepreneur is selling or talking about. It takes eight to 12 times for somebody to even realize. But if you're in their inbox with a title, and they have to, they have to delete it, right? They have to delete it in order for it to get gone versus on Facebook, they're just scrolling and, and there's thousands of people on Facebook. So they might not, no matter how much they're scrolling, they may never even come across your post, but if it's in your email, they have to either open it or delete it or both. Um, so you're in front of these people. So growing your email list is great to like offer freebies or do a challenge or, have, you know, contact forums on your um, website or when somebody does buy something, being able to capture that email address. Um, <clears throat> that's how to like gain these people. And then how do you keep them? Like they're part of your community. You're going to be nurturing them. You're going to tell them stories. Like I'm telling you a story right now because we're going to send an email out to my email list about how Facebook took me down. Um, and they're going to open it because they want to, they want to know, they know me, love me and trust me. And I'm in their inbox. So they're going to be like, what the fuck happened to Brandon Lee? What? Um, so you nurture them. Give them free tips on things that you know that they're following you for, such as staying on your hovercraft and <laughs> how to be conscious about the triggers, um, you know, and create a sense of belonging for these people so that they know that they're part of your community and that there's so many other people that are, that are like them. And, you know, empowering them and letting them know how special they are to you because they are, right? Inspire them, influence them for goodness gracious. You know, you're an influencer. Like um, if you even just have a few people, they're following you because they know you, love you, trust you about something. They're looking up to you for some sort of reason. You have something that they want. Maybe it's energy. 
Maybe it's fame. I don't know. Maybe whatever it is, influence them. And then you could sell to them, right? That's when they're like, oh, I, I know her, love her, trust her so much. And she has this really groovy thing that she's offering. And I want to support her. I want a piece of it. I want it to integrate into my life so that I could be more like her. Right. Um, so you guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. We covered the story behind what happened. I tried to recover it twice. It just basically is saying we've already made our final decision. You're ineligible to be on our platform. Um, so we'll see, maybe a miracle will happen and they'll change their mind. But, uh, until then, I'm embracing this moment, sharing it with you guys, letting you know that how I'm responding, how I'm feeling about it, um, and how I am open, spirit, to something coming further so it'll make more sense, right? So a lot of times when these things occur, happen, a lot of people will freak out because they can't see the future event right? I can't see what will happen now that I'm not on Facebook. But if I know, and I make a decision that I'm another um, seed is going to come, another door is going to open. And then I'm going to go, oh, I would have never seen that door. Had I just been going along, along, along with what I was doing before. Right. So I'm sending you guys all love. I hope you love this little short little episode. Um, and find me on Instagram at I am Brandoline or on YouTube, Brandoline Johnson. And then of course, here on our podcast or go to my website, sign up for my email addresses, right? Sign up for my email list, brandoline.com. Um, we have some freebies up there. There's a free library that you sign up for the free library on my website. You'll automatically be on my email list. Plus you'll get access to lots of free videos. So I'm sending y'all love and I hope to connect with you more.